Hello friends, welcome. Friends, today morning I saw this article um, which is having a headline saying that BSNL set to provide 5G connection and know why it is a challenge for Mukesh Ambani, Jio and Airtel. Right? So this is the heading of the article and this article was just published on 3rd of August in the morning. And interestingly, in this article, there are certain mentions which are uh, kind of very, you know, <laughs> different normal unit out of normal, right? So let me just read out the article. It says that in the upcoming month, BSNL in conjunction with three startup companies will initiate 5G trials. So BSNL is not doing this trial, by the way, on their own. They will basically initiate trial with three startup companies. Primary focus will be on interest uh, on establishing private networks, uh, you know, closed network private network with BSNL providing spectrum infrastructure and resources while the partner company handles the delivery of services. So basically they are talking about private network. But I believe that, that going forward, the same model probably can be used for delivering services to the common man also. And with price increasing, the tra tariffs increasing uh, for both 4G and 5G, this uh, news can be of quite a bit of excitement to the common man that BSNL will finally provide 5G services. Now, why I'm doing this video? The reason I'm doing this video is to tell you that BSNL will never be able to challenge Jio as well as Airtel. Now you tell, now you may ask this question that why I am making this claim. The reason I'm making this claim is that BSNL does not have equivalent assets to be able to challenge both RGO and Bharti Airtel. Their spectrum quality and the quantum is far, far superior than BSNL and BSNL will never be able to match their spectrum quality and coverage. And this video, I'm going to explain to you why BSNL will never be able to challenge Geo. Geo has far, by far the, the best spectrum compared to all the three players that we are discussing right now. Now friends, let me go to my slide because always I make sure that I put slides together in order to explain my, cons my uh, reasoning. So it is not just on the air. Now let's talk about the quantum of spectrum BSNL has. Now this, see, this, this chart has got two compartments. The compartment which is on the left is BSNL. So this is BSNL and the compartment which is on the right is Reliance Geo. Okay. So what I've done is that I have compared both these oper operator spectrum side by side. So if you look at so it's just a comparison of both the operator spectrum. So you will find that there are two types of spectrum. One is time division duplex. Another is frequency division duplex. Now, for those viewers who have no clue about time division and frequency division duplex, let me make an attempt, right? And I'll be, it will be a very, very high level attempt. See, time division spectrum is spectrum which is having one single block like this. And this block of spectrum will be used for both uploading as well as downloading data. Only one block. Whereas the frequency division spectrum will have two different paths and they are separated in the frequency domain by a gap. Now these two blocks of spectrum will be simultaneously used for uploading and downloading data. Whereas in case of TDD, they are not simultaneously used. So like if you are traveling in this direction, then you can't upload, right? And then if you are uploading in this direction, then you cannot download. So what you do, you do time sharing and then accordingly you basically upload and download. So this is basically a very high level and I'm not going to get into the details of advantage of TDD and FDD spectrum. And the reason I told you the high level difference is because there are two kinds of spectrum which is already there. People will be wondering what is this all about. Now if you look at this BSNL spectrum, BSNL has spectrum in 3500 megahertz band in the 2500 megahertz band, in the 2100 megahertz band, and the 900 megahertz band, as well as 700 megahertz band, right? So I have marked those spectrum, which are FDD and TDD separately. Whereas Reliance Geo 
has spectrum in 3500 MHz band, in 2300 MHz band, in 1800 MHz band, in 800 MHz band, and in 700 MHz band. Now the quantum has been listed on the blocks which are shown here right in front of your screen. So you will see that all the quantum has been listed here. Now you might find that there are certain quantums which are not multiple of 10 or 5. So what I have done is I have done two things. I have taken the FDD spectrum as the reference. Reference means that the spectrum will have uplink and downlink as I told you. Two different paths which will be active simultaneously. One in the downward direction and one is the upward direction. So what do you do? You basically have to count this spectrum two times. But we generally don't do that. For example, if you have a 10 megahertz of FDD spectrum and 10 megahertz means uplink will also be 10 megahertz and downlink will also be 10 megahertz, right? So both of them will be 10 megahertz. But we only say 10 megahertz. But in case of TDD, when you say 50 megahertz of TDD spectrum, we count the full block of spectrum. So what I have done is that I have divided the TDD spectrum by half in order to align with the calculation of FDD spectrum so that we know that how much quantum of spectrum we have because the, both the uplink and the downlink actually will be consumed for data transmission. So you need to make an apples to apples comparison. So if you look at Reliance, Reliance has got 100 megahertz and 130 megahertz of spectrum in some of the circles. So what I've done, I've made an average and then I've divided by 22. So you know, on an average, Reliance has got 55 megahertz of 3500 megahertz band, which will be um, on, on a pan India basis. So actually it is 55 into 2, 2 times, right? So that is how you do the calculation. Whereas BSNL has got 70 megahertz of spectrum of 3500 megahertz band pan India. So I have made it 35 megahertz. Similarly, in 2500 megahertz band, BSNL has 20 megahertz spectrum in some of the circles and some circles they don't have it. And therefore I have done the same calculation. It comes out to be 6.63 megahertz. 2100 BSNL has 10 megahertz because this is an FDD spectrum. So both the blocks are there, uplink and downlink. So BSNL has 10 megahertz in all the circles except for one, but I just for the approximation I have taken 10 megahertz. And then FDD spectrum in 900 BSNL has got 6.2 and this is being mainly used for GSM. And then we have got BSNL has got 10 megahertz of spectrum in 700 megahertz band which is for 4G. So let's do, uh, let's first look at BSNL. BSNL has what? BSNL is currently doing 4G in 2500 megahertz band. I don't know whether they're doing or not, but probably this spectrum will be used for 4G. The, they are currently doing 3G in the 2100 megahertz spectrum band, 2G in the 900 megahertz spectrum band and 700 megahertz band, it will be 4G. Okay, so they are doing 4G. So definitely they are doing 4G here. So the 5G spectrum option for BSNL is only the 3500 megahertz band and that is 35 megahertz equivalent, which is FDD, which is 70 megahertz equivalent in TDD, right? So that's the situation. Whereas Reliance, if you look at, they have got 5G spectrum in three different bands. Actually, two different bands currently. One is the 700 megahertz band, 10 megahertz, and the 3500 megahertz band. And slowly, they will be converting the 1800 megahertz band also in 5G. So finally, Reliance will have 5G in three different bands, 3500, 1800, and 700, whereas BSNL, will have to restrict his 5G is only in one single band till the time it kind of reforms the 900 megahertz spectrum band. But even if it reforms the 900, it is not going to be sufficient because 6.2 is neither here nor there. It will be 5 megahertz. It will be grossly insufficient. 2100, they can. So they can abandon the 3G uh, service and convert this into 5G. So this can be a very useful candidate for 5G. Now, 2500 uh, megahertz band, they will have to continue to live with 4G because if they can, if they just have the 700 megahertz band and they don't have any other band at the higher frequency for capacity purpose, the 4G services will be very thin and very inferior quality. So for 4G, BSNL will have 700 megahertz band and 2500 megahertz band and ultimately for 5G, BSNL may have 3500 megahertz band and probably 2100 megahertz band. So this is the situation as per BSNL's 5G is concerned. And for 4G, BSNL, as I told you, 700 and 2500 and 900 will continue to remain in, in 2G for a long period of time because 2G is not going to go away. 
whereas Reliance will have 5G in 3500, in uh, 1800 and in 700. Now comes the interesting discussion. What is that? So let's go to the next slide to make you understand what is the problem that BSNL is going to face. Now, if you go to this, this is where the main discussion is going to anchor. Now, why? what I am going to tell you here is that, as I have already told in one of the earlier videos, that when you are doing 5G, you have got both options, single SA network, which is standalone network, and non-standalone network, which is called NSA. Now, to those viewers who do not, which, who have not seen my earlier video, I will simply like to say the following. When it is SA, means the carrier or the spectrum has to be 5G only. It can't be 4G. So, there is no option of 4G. You have to be in a 5G spectrum and the core also has to be 5G. And that is as simple as that. Whereas, in case of NSA mode, which is non-standalone mode, you need to find a anchor 4G carrier for you to start. If you do not have an anchor 4G carrier, then your 5G spectrum is not going to work. So this is the difference between standalone and non-standalone. Standalone means 5G is the only anchor carrier. There can be one band, there can be multiple bands. Whereas in case of non-standalone, you have to work with a 4G carrier. That becomes the anchor carrier. And then on top of it, that carrier, you can overlay a 5G spectrum. For example, let's say, if you are doing non-standalone, then let's say that if you have 700 megahertz band for 4G, then 4G becomes the anchor carrier for your non-standalone network. And then on top of it, you can basically overlay the 3500 megahertz band for 5G, right? This is non-standalone. Whereas in case of standalone, this is non-standalone, right? Whereas in case of standalone, what will happen? Any band that you're going to use, it has to be 5G only. You can't use 700 if it is 4G. You can't use 1800 if it is 4G. So you have to use 3500 only. There is no other option. You understood now? Now let's go to the next stage of explanation. Now let's say that you do not have any deployment of 5G in the lower spectrum band and you only have 4G and you have 5G only in the 3500 megahertz spectrum band currently as per BSNL is concerned. So let's go into BSNL and look, look at the network again. So you'll find that BSNL don't, do not have any option to deploy 5G in the low frequency band. They only have the option to deploy 5G in the high frequency band. Now let's go to the slide where you will understand the problem. The problem would be that, as I told you, BSNL cannot do non-standalone. Why it can't do non-standalone? Because it does not have an anchor low frequency 5G spectrum to hold on to. It has to hold on to the high frequency 5G spectrum. And if it does stand alone, then its network coverage is going to be very, very low because this spectrum does not travel far. This has very poor propagation characteristics. So you will not get 5G coverage. Almost like 50% of the area is going to, 50% of the area is going to be without 5G coverage. Okay. So therefore, there is no point in implementing standalone as far as BSNL is concerned. So they have to do non-standalone because the 700 megahertz or 700 megahertz 4G for BSNL will be able to serve the curve coverage requirement and it will become the anchor spectrum for 4G. And the high frequency band 3500 megahertz is going to become the capacity spectrum for 5G. So this spectrum and this spectrum is going to work together, right? Because this spectrum BSNL does not have so there is no question 1800, there is no question about that. You can basically say 2100 could be an option as you move forward in time. Now, let's say that you are doing non-standalone NSA mode, right? NSA mode, what happens is that even though the low frequency spectrum, the 700 megahertz spectrum is the anchor spectrum, but the signaling to able to lock on to the 4G core will happen within the spectrum block only. For example, let's say if you want to get locked into the 3500 megahertz spectrum 5G, you can't use the 700 megahertz spectrum for signaling because there are two types of communication which happens between the handset and the base station. One is the signaling, another is the data traffic which I've shown with a higher, with a thicker arrow. Now, signaling has to happen within the same spectrum band as far as non-standalone 
uh, is concerned. Like for 5G, if you want to lock into the 3500 megahertz spectrum band, you have to do signaling within the 3500 megahertz band only. Otherwise, 3500 megahertz band will not get locked into. Similarly, if you want to lock into the 700 megahertz band, your signaling traffic is going to flow within the 700 megahertz band and will get locked into the 700 megahertz band. Now, the problem is that because these two bands are distinct in nature, therefore, even if, let's say, the 3500 megahertz downlink is available and you, your mobile phone is able to see the downlink where the probability of that is very high because this base station, BTS, is going to transmit at a higher power. So the coverage in the downlink is going to be much higher than the coverage in the uplink as far as the handset is concerned. Let me just make this concept again very clear. The coverage of any base station is not dependent upon the downlink. Downlink travels much farther from the point of base station because the base station is able to transmit at very high power. The, but the handset does not have the capability to transmit at high power because the battery power is limited. Therefore, what happens when handset is transmitting, the coverage is actually determined by the uplink. So what happens is that because the uplink strength is going to be very low, even though you are getting a downlink which is going to be very high power and it can stretch a little far, your handset is not going to lock into the 3500 MHz base station and therefore its coverage is going to be limited. So what will happen is that even though you have an anchor carrier of 700 with a higher coverage potential, you will still be missing the 3500 MHz 5G coverage. So in not standalone, what will happen is because BSNL is going to lock into the 700 MHz spectrum band, BSNL subscriber, because the 700 is the lowest frequency spectrum band. It is the most, uh, spec it is the spectrum band with the highest coverage. So what will happen is the most of the time BSNL subscriber is going to see only 4G. So they will, they will not be able to see this 5G band. They will be only able to see 4G. So even if you have a 5G network, you will be locked into the 4G part of your network and you will not get the kind of speed that is required because this does not have coverage, right? Now let's look at what will happen to Reliance. Now if you Reliance, if you see here, they are actually much more advantaged. Why they are much more advantaged? The reason is that Reliance is the SA network, right? So let me just uh, show you here. Reliance has got an SA network. Now in case of Reliance, SA network, they have the 3500 megahertz band and the 700 megahertz band currently working in parallel, right? And with a handset, with a carrier aggregation, carrier means both these spectrum bands are seen as together, is part of the same block of spectrum. So they logically, can you can combine these two block of spectrum together as if that they are part of the same spectrum block. So what will happen is the Reliance's 5G coverage is going to be available all the time because 700 megahertz band is going to be visible all the time because Reliance 5G is in 700 and the 3500 megahertz band will have a better connectivity in the downlink, better coverage in the downlink and therefore what will happen Reliance a customer whose handset has got carrier aggregation capability will be able to upload using the 700 megahertz spectrum and download using the 3500 megahertz spectrum. So the quality of Reliance 5G network is going to be much, much better because your upload is going to be a separate band, download is going to be a separate band. There is no problem of signaling because the carrier, the handset which will have the carrier aggregation capability can see both the spectrum simultaneously and signal both of them simultaneously and both the spectrum will be visible all the time till the time the 3500 megahertz uplink is going to get diminished because the spectrum is very high frequency. So it will stretch, stretch, stretch till the time the downlink is available because anyway uplink you are doing for 700 megahertz band. So, but BSNL cannot do it. BSNL is only locked into the 3500 megahertz spectrum. It doesn't have an underlay, 5G underlay, which it can lock with the 3500 megahertz spectrum to stretch its coverage. So BSNL coverage of 5G is going to be very poor compared to what Reliance coverage would be. You got it now? That is why BSNL will not be able to compete with Reliance. Reliance has got two advantage. 
they have got 5G in up higher frequency band and the lowest frequency band possible and that will become the anchor spectrum for 5G and SA with SA network both the networks are going to be seen as a integrated singles block of spectrum and with they converting the 1800 megahertz band into 5G going forward so they will have what how many band the one first band which is 3500 then we have got second band which is the 1800 megahertz band and then we have got the third band which is the 700 megahertz band so you can see that their quality of network is going to be far far superior and the coverage also going to be superior now coming back to the second point Reliance, somebody can say that okay bsnl can convert the 2100 megahertz spectrum this block of spectrum also into into 5g yes they can but this is a high frequency band this is not a low frequency band so if you convert this particular block of spectrum into 5g and if you operate this with this block of spectrum in standalone mode in order to see both this block in as an integrated block what will happen your coverage of the network is going to shrink significantly and it will be better to serve your customer using a 4g spectrum block because 2100 does not have good coverage so if let's say in rural area where the 700 megahertz coverage is going to be available why would anybody like to use the 5g spectrum even if the 2100 is in 5g you understand so therefore it is more important for bsnl to find a low frequency band anchor for 5g unless they find a low frequency band anchor for 5g their 5g network is going to be hopeless compared to what reliance will be able to offer you understand now bharti has also in a similar situation but bharti what bharti is doing bharti is converting their 1800 megahertz spectrum into 5g slowly slowly 5g and going forward bharti will maybe will be able to get the 7 600 megahertz spectrum block 10 megahertz and they have to both bsnl as well as bharti have to get 600 megahertz spectrum in order to compete with reliance from the point of view of 5g spectrum quality though both of them can't compete with reliance because reliance spectrum is the best spectrum because they have they will have spectrum 5g spectrum in all three layers the layer the highest layer the mid layer as well as the lowest layer right so this is the reason why i wanted to do this video to tell those people who are getting very euphoric about bsnl's 5g they should understand that bsnl 5g quality will be the poorest of all because first their quantum of spectrum of 5g is less the reliance has got 100 megahertz and 130 megahertz in many circles seven circles i think they have got 130 megahertz and rest of the circles i think eight circles they have got 130 and rest of the circles 14 circles they have got 100 megahertz bsnl has got only 70 megahertz which i have converted into 35 to make it fdd equivalent so their capacity of BSNL of 5G is very low and reliance capacity of 5G is going to be very, very high, right? Now, coming back to the point that what the government should have ideally done. The government should have ideally given BSNL, as I have been saying, I don't know how many times I've said this, you know, I, people might be getting bored with my point of, see what BSNL should have, government should have done. This is an, again, the app which I've created and I'm going to show you the 800 megahertz spectrum. The 800 megahertz is the 4G spectrum and there are a lot of spectrum here. If you see red is Reliance Geo, right? And this pink is lying free. And then this violet color is Arcom. So you can free up this also because Arcom is not using it. You can resolve the bankruptcy issue of Arcom and free this spectrum. So you will imagine that in many circles you have 10 megahertz of spectrum available free to be used by BSNL for 4G. And if BSNL had done 800 megahertz 4G, then the 700 megahertz spectrum which BSNL is currently holding and doing 4G, they can use it for 5G, right? This is the spectrum, BSNL. Because Reliance Geo is red, BSNL is this color. And this is one block of spectrum, 5 megahertz, which the government is thinking of giving it to railways. So this can become 5G. Now, if that happens, now I'll come back here. So what would have happened here? If this happens, then you see BSNL has now anchor layer of spectrum of 5G, 700 megahertz, right? And they will have one block here for 800 megahertz 4G. So they will have 800 megahertz 4G. 
the anchor layer will be 5G, 700, and then the top layer will be the, the high frequency band of 3500 will be 5G. So they can also deploy SA network and can challenge Reliance to a considerable extent Though it will not be apples to apples, but does not matter because BSNL customer base will be lower than what Reliance is. So BSNL 5G quality would have increased significantly by locking, by making these two blocks of spectrum together. And this is the only way BSNL could have been successful, which I've been saying it from the very beginning, that you are suboptimally using your spectrum band. Because then what would have happened, there will be another advantage which BSNL would have got. The 800 megahertz 4G has got a better ecosystem. So they could have leveraged Reliance ecosystem for 800 megahertz 4G. Handset would have been a cheaper price. And for 5G also, the ecosystem of Reliance could have been leveraged. So BSNL instead of running in a separate direction with a different frequency combination, they could have used the same frequency combination which Reliance is using and therefore the consumers and BSNL both would have been benefited because of economies of scale of devices. You got my point? So how foolish this is. This 800 megahertz spectrum is lying vacant. They could have given it to 4G and they could have done 700 megahertz 5G and they could have empowered themselves with, with same kind of capability which Reliance currently has. So and friends, that's all I wanted to cover. All this discussion and euphoria is going to go waste because BSNL network coverage will be very, very poor compared to what Reliance network coverage would be because of the three layer policy Reliance will have, the strategy Reliance will have and BSNL will find it very difficult to do three layer. Even two layer, they will find it very difficult to do. Okay, thank you very much friends for for listening and I'll come back to you with a new video next time as soon as I get an opportunity and if I find any topic which is interesting. Oh my God, what happened to mine? <laughs> yeah, so here it is, here it is. So, so thank you very much.